there's been a ton of video. I'm not going to rehash all of what's been going on so far around the MPC X um, special edition. Uh, and, and my views are, and it, it sort of changed a little bit. <laughs> Hey all, how you doing? Hope all is good, hope all are well, and all that good stuff. Now, um, quick update. Um, I had made a, a video on the MPCX um, special edition and stuff, but uh, I had a, <laughs> I lost, my, my phone got wiped, and um, the video went with it as well, so haven't been able to get that back, because I don't think it had up uploaded to cloud to get backed up so um, there you go so this is just a quick short version of that um, I was going to do the whole thing again but it's one of those things that was quite spontaneous based on what was going on and stuff so um, I my views are and I'll quickly summarize this now I've got my MPC 3000 sitting over here as you can see and I've got beats made up on it and stuff like that and I've been playing around with it and over here I've got my X but guess what's sitting behind it now that's what I'm going to talk about I've got my I brought my modular rig um, as you can see I call it the mothership and I've brought that from home um, because it's going to be living here now um, for many reasons I'm going to get a stand from it looks like it might be a quick trip to Ikea to go and get a decent stand at the right height to elevate it above the um, uh, the MPCX. Now, yeah, just going back to MPCX usage. Now, there's been a ton of video. I'm not gonna rehash all of what's been going on so far around the MPCX um, special edition. Uh, and, and my views are, and it, it, it sort of changed a little bit. And I, I think it's really based around uh, what the expectation is of the SC. Now, based on my workflow and the things that I have going on here, I have, I mean, I use multiple uh, workstations, drum machines, well, they're not even drum machines, samplers and stuff like that, of which they are here. So you've got the one that gets mentioned every week, the S2400. You've got the push sitting there that's been utilized and working with my um, Ableton Live then I've got obviously the 3000 sitting there and various other tools and stuff like that I've got a couple of keyboards floating around I've got the analog stuff over there which is the the Moog and uh, I've got the um, Model D and up in the corner as you know I've got the the um, the Matriarch stuff like that so yeah there are various tools i can input in and my workflow is at the moment um i will use whichever door I've, I've i've got i mean at the moment i tend to start off in 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 in, in ableton and they move around from there or i'll start off in a, 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 a run a drum pattern or so it depends there's no there's no set way of starting stuff with me it just depends on how i feel but um, in coming back around to the MPCX now, as you can see, I've got the the MPCX, and it's it's I use it. I don't say I wouldn't say I use it every day, but I'll jump into it and do a few things and stuff like that. But I've got a few things which I'm going to be working on, and the reason I haven't used it is because it's got an error code, and it comes up, and I can't use it for sessions with people, and that's my challenge because I don't want to be working on in this and the error code comes up and the session stops and then that's the end of it I have to transfer to something else so I'll avoid that if I'm doing stuff myself I'll use it um, it has gone off to Akai Pro to be fixed um, some of the errors have gone but there's still a couple remaining but I can work with what's going on my only issue is I need to get it resolved so um, I've got a feeling I'm going to be sending it off for repair again and um it cost me a couple of hundred pounds, so it's like two hundred something pounds to actually to 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 get to something which is not fixed. But that's a whole other story. I'll come back to that and I'll get it done and I'll deal with it. As a machine, I do like it. Um, does it sound like the three thousand? No, 
Will it ever sound like the 3000 as far in our lifetime? Don't know. But my thing was, and what, what, what I was alluding to in the video, which got wiped, and I'm going to come back onto it, is I've got to think, this is what I think. Um, people are talking about the classic sound. Now, I think if the, the price point is probably the main issue, how do you create something at this particular price point? Um, and it's, it's what, 2400 in the States? $2,400. It's probably the same here. I'm not too sure. I think it is because I looked it up recently. But I think if you wanted to put in those filters and converters and stuff like that, it'll bump the price up. Now, there are there are um, hardware mixers, DJ mixers, which are analog as well and stuff like that, which have got the, the you know, like they've given, you know, you've got the rotary mixers, which are very popular these days. A lot of my friends use them. And, and they're analog. So there's no reason why you couldn't put analog circuitry in here to, to get the sound that you want. So the question is, it's going to cost you more. I reckon it'll cost you a grand more. So I, I reckon it'll, if, if, if they wanted to um, create an edition which had the, you know, that analog sound, analog filters and all that kind of stuff, um, the price point was, as we said, is 2,400. I reckon it'll cost three and a half, 3,400 probably 3,400 up to four, somewhere around there. Now the question is, would people buy it? And, and and that's the issue. Now, I probably would. I'll tell you why. Because because that, that would be a classic because you've got that MPC, that real MPC sound, and you have given it something which is gonna be here for edges. I mean, think of it. I mean, my MPC 3000, I mean, I've had it, what, probably about a year now and how old is it? I'm not even sure <laughs> to tell the truth. I'd have to check. I mean, it's got. I mean, it's got the limited edition. Sorry, I don't know if you can see that. It's got the limited edition. Don't want the camera to fall off. Badge on the top, um, and it's got a. It's got. A, it's got. It's got its number on it in terms of it's. It's is a. Uh, edition eleven oh six. There you go. I don't know what the numbers go up to, but hey, it's got a number, it's got a plate, I love it, it does the job. I've got a track on it at the moment, which I'm um, just playing around with, and it's been modded, so it's got the um, SD card in it as well, stuff like that, So, and plus I've got the original disc and things, so I can do all sorts of stuff with it. Um, but the MPC-X, for me, uh, if you want one machine, or if you're buying one machine and you just want something to do the lot on there, it will do the job. Absolutely, it will definitely do the job. Um, there's no issues on that. The, you know, I'll just put it in a picture actually. It will do the job. Now, I, I, and the thing is, I totally forgot about this, that the fact that it's got the CV port, um, CV outputs and stuff like that. So it's got gates and it's got CV and it, it does all that. And I totally forgot about that. So that's a feature which um, other devices don't have. So I can integrate it with my modular, my modular rig. Um, I've got another, I've got the Akai keyboard, I've got the mini, uh, the MPK Mini Plus down here as well, because I bought that so that I could hook it straight up to the modular. But just, you know, I can hook up my MPCX to modular and do stuff. So there's going to be some sound packs and stuff like that, which I'll be doing, and which will, I'll probably use between the keyboard and the MPCX to create them. So this is the thing. It is a device which you can do a ton of things with. Now, yes, in terms of what it does, um, the MPCX uh, Special Edition does it give you the sound? It just gives you an, a, a uh, it gives you an, a, a clean sound. That's how things are these days. If this had been made and they had the technology twenty five years ago, it probably would have looked like this. Um, but as technology has moved on, I mean, everyone, all the companies that were coming out at the time, like, S, you know, when um, EMU SP1200 came out or 12, you know, the, um, EMU S, uh, SP121200 and all that, they used what was going on at the time, what circuitry was available at that time. And, that, and that's what they had. So they made the best. I mean, the only thing is they differentiated it in terms of aesthetics, the design and how it looked. And obviously the filters and how they did it, the sound, each device had its own sound. Um, yes, they are digital. I'm not going to get into the argument whether they're analog or digital. They've got analog components such as resistors, capacitors, transistors, and stuff like that. Yeah, but in in terms of the con you know, are you converting a digital sound 
an analog sound into digital when you sample it essentially you are right but you know along the signal path you've got analog components which give you that rich sound which you've got so i'm not going to go down that road i've had that online already and it was a it, it's, it's amazing how the analog and digital these are not analog devices as such but you have analog components in them hence the reason why they give they they, they have a particular sound they have a particular feeling and all the rest of it and stuff like that so um I think that the MPCX limited edition is, is it is what it is. Um, I've seen people coming out recently saying and reinforcing that it is a collector's item. Fine, it's a lot of money to spend on something that you're collecting. I mean, I you know if you're saying that you're going to collect an old drum machine like a uh, sorry sampler like a, um, what's it called MPC sixty, I'd understand three thousand, I'd understand. Um, MPC 2000 and 2000 XL, I understand. Uh, but for collecting an MPC X SE, I'm not sure. Um, as a collector's device, it's got the color scheme, it's got more RAM, but RAM doubles over time. I mean, 18 months time to, you know, 18 months time, you know, Moore's, Moore's Law, it doubles. So you've got more available. The sound sounds get, you know, sound packs get bigger operating systems get bigger and you're back to where you are so will it be a collector's in two years time i don't think so but we'll see it'll be a collector's from the point of view of the color and how it looks and stuff like that but i think you know the akai pro have gone down the road of sound packs and sounds and um so workflow if you want something which has given you a, a particular workflow, the MPCX um, Special Edition will do it for you. If you want something where you can have one machine and you can go in and you can do whatever you want and plug anything you want into it, it will do that for you. Will it give you an old crunchy analog sound? No. Can you use it to manipulate sound in your own particular way and do tweaks? Yes. Um, it's funny, I saw a video, uh, a, a YouTube video, this morning actually and uh i'll put his name up and he, he did something which he said everyone's talking about and it was a really good i was actually laughing in places where he said he's talking about the mpcx and he had the mpcx and he said okay everyone's talking about the sound in this or, or, or workflow how are people using it you're taking the sound pack you, you're putting it in you're getting a clean sound he said okay when we were doing hip-hop 90s and stuff like that what did we do? What we were limited by the amount of sound of the amount of um, time available, the amount of memory. You had five seconds. You had ten seconds or eleven seconds, whatever it was. So you get your MP, your your MPC, and he demonstrated it. He did. He's done a really good thirteen minute video. I'm going to put it up. You need to. Everyone needs to watch it because that just so it doesn't solve the problem, but it does tell you how you can use the any of the new MPCs, the MPC X. Um, the MPCX Special Edition, how to get that lo-fi sound. Just put the record on. He said, hey, there's a, a you know, vinyl. Put it on. It was on 33. He whacked it up to 45, sampled it, dropped it down, and he, he created a record. Um, you know, a, a, what was it called? He created, a, um, he created a piece of music in the way which we used to do it back in the day. Did it have the same feel? Yes. Um... Did it have the same weight? Well, once you finished it, run it through something at the end of the day and see if you can get that warm sound that you want at the end of it. Just run it through, I don't know, run it through tape or something like that. Record it to tape and bring it back. Don't know. But he did demonstrate how you how we used to record. And it's not just about, okay, you know, you, he said you've got infinite samples, sample time. You've you got, you got a day's worth of sampling time on a, on a device these days. And, he, you know, he's, he's joking, but you, he's, he's not lying. I mean, you can sample, you can just put something on and play the whole record and you can sample to your, your heart's content. But put restrictions on yourself when you're using the MPCX. Put restrictions on yourself when you're using the special edition to see what you come up with. Take the record, speed it up, sample slow it down then suddenly you're getting you won't get the um you won't get all of the the effects because when you sort of you know the bit rate crunch and all this kind of stuff but you will get something very similar to it and you can get that lo-fi sound and then you then there you are you've got it 
you know, run it through something else at the end and then you can create your sound. When you're going to, to do a mix or, 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 or something, then you can say, okay, send it off to a mixer, send it off to someone to mix to add the warmth to it. But at least you've created something in, the, in that vein of the old school um, tracks and stuff. It will give you that. It won't give you the weight. It won't give you a distinctive character, but you can mimic that sound. I don't know about the, the you know, like, Oh, you know, like MPCX has always had, even from the Renaissance, where you can go, okay, I'm going to make it sound like an SP1200 and it does the ringing sound. To me, it's just got a ring, you know, it's just like someone just sampled a ring and put it on there. It doesn't, it's not the same to me compared to um, having an MP, um, having a SP1200 or any, or even like what I can do with my S2400. That has weight. Absolutely no doubt about it. It is powerful. But yeah, go for it. Have a play around. Um, take the sound, you know, get a sample, just go onto vinyl, get something, um, take the record, speed it up, sample it, slow it back down, get that grainy sort of sound that you're after, and then make your, make your, make your tracks from there, and that's it. Um, the argument about the SP, the, what's it called it, the, um, I was going to say SP, the MPC X SC and stuff will rage on forever. Um, my only, I, th I think what people are saying is, Akai Pro are selling something as a collector's item or special edition and there's nothing really special about it. That's the that's the thing. And I suppose from that aspect, they're giving you a machine with a ton of sound packs um, already built in. Uh, it's got, you know, the look and feel of a classic. I wouldn't put it in that category because a picture I saw on the website had the MPC um, special edition in the middle then I think to one side it had the 3000 and I think it had the MPC 60 I you can't put those two machines together with this they are what they are and you can probably put the 4000 in the middle you're good but it's not a new machine obviously so um, is, it a, is it a classic time will tell I don't think it is because it's replaceable by other things it doesn't have a distinctive sound it doesn't bang but it will give you what you want in terms of um being able to have one machine if if i if someone said to me oh could you recommend recommend an mpc to get um and i've never used mpc before i'd say all right if you've got the money go and buy go and buy an mpc x whichever one um, x or se i don't you know because it will give or one of the smaller ones and stuff like that um it will you'll be able to do what you want and you'll have that mpc workflow and, and things like that and how you but in terms of flexibility it will give you everything you need um, and then if you want to explore um, the real you know and you've got the budget to explore what the NPCs were like then yeah spend the money but I probably wouldn't recommend an old one because if it's your only device you want something that's fairly flexible if you've got other equipment then yeah you can go and get a 3000 you can go and get a mpc 60 and all the rest of it because most of the people i've seen or know or even online or, or, or on on social they've got other devices as well as the classic so you but you want something which can work for you and if you want one device and that's all you and that is your budget and you say okay i've got two and a half grand to spend on one device i'd probably recommend it um there are other things you could probably go i mean Personally, I would probably go and get a push or something like that and Ableton because flexibility around it. The sound are, you know, an MPC-X and, MP and, and Ableton push, I don't see any differences between them. And that's probably why um, I spend more time because my, my workflow is geared towards the push at the moment, but I still use the um, MPC-X, but I, 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 because I know it, but in terms of being able to manipulate sound, whether it's in, in, in a door and using the able to, the, the, the push to, I can do everything I need in that. Um, but obviously the benefits of the X is, it's got all the outputs. You can do also, you can plug anything you want into it. You need a audio um, card, no, sorry, an audio card. You need an external audio box for the, um, uh, for Ableton push and stuff like that. So who knows when the push free comes out, that'll be interesting. Well, I say when it comes out, if they make a push free, what will they do? Because that is the one which is going to be very interesting. Um, will they make it? I don't know. 
Um, we've been waiting a long time for that one. But in terms of the X, it is what it is. You have to accept it, take it, leave it, buy it, don't buy it, don't know. But take it for what it is, but don't expect it to have anything which is classic. Digital is digital now, 16-bit, um, 24-bit, 48 kilohertz, 44 kilohertz. It's just clean sound now. What you do with it after that is up to you or how you want to manipulate it. But you have at least you have the possibility of creating something clean. And if you want to create something dirty, you can. Because you can always sample into it and make it dirty. You can do that. So that's it. That's all I've got to say on the um, MPC XSE subject. I had a video that's slightly different, but I'm kind of glad that one died because this one feels better to me. Anyway, have a great one. See ya.